Doodle bud. So I'm going to warn you right at the start of this video. You're going to hear me talking about playing with my pecker a lot. But don't get the wrong idea because this is a laser pecker. So here's what I'm talking about. Here is a lighter that I engraved with, uh, I can't remember which one this was, whether it was my Creality laser or my X-Tool or my a Taser one, whatever it is. So I did a little uh, Bubbles here from Trailer Park Boys and I did this Dragon. Now, I probably could have done a little better job, maybe an extra pass. Good from afar, but you know, kind of far from good. It's okay, but uh, let's have a look at what this laser, so this is from the Laser Pecker 3. This is a memory stick, a USB stick, and that's anodized aluminum. And just like the detail on this, the point size on that laser is so much sharper. So the things I can do with this type of laser versus my other one is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm going to go through, we're going to engrave a bunch of stuff. Uh, let me show you one thing real quick. Here is a pen I engraved recently. This is uh, from Shibui North. They're, I think it's called the Pocket Fox. So I wanted, she sent it to me plain because she normally engraves it. She sent it to me plain to see what I could do with my engraver. And, uh, you know, it turned out not too bad. I messed up the engraving. I screwed up the graphic and left a gap. And what we're going to do today is fill the gap, and this time with this system here. So this is an infrared laser, Galvo, much uh, finer point, much more precision. I'm going to try my best to line it up there perfectly, but this will be great because you will see night and day the difference. You can see it here. Uh, we're going to do it right here on the pen as well. And if I'm brave enough, which oh, I'll give it a go, whatever, the nib. It's just completely virgin space screaming to be engraved. So we're going to throw that down on here at the same time. But we'll do a bunch of other stuff. This does plastic as well. I'll tell you all about it, how it works, some of the technology, how this sort of works. And uh, I've been engraving everything in the house. Been having fun. Let's show you what's up. So here's the setup. This is the Laser Pecker uh, 3 all assembled. The assembly takes two seconds. Let me just take this off so I can show you. I'll explain why, to you why that comes off in a moment. You have your base plate. You have... This Z-axis, it's electronic. There's a lead screw on here. This adjusts your focus. There's just two screws right here on the bottom, two uh, flathead cap screws, really nice ones. The Allen key provided and a spare screw, so that's nice. Bolt those together, two bolts underneath. You have a thumb screw to attach the laser head, and now you're together. Plug in your power, and you're done. You have your base here, and you have sort of like an optical table. You have this array of uh, screws here so you can use there's they got some little uh, clamps here that you can use for if you're doing multiple parts and just putting everything in you're going to run a batch of 100 or something you can put these stops in here also this comes out so if you want to do something like on this table you just pop this out engrave right on here this is portable you have this handle this goes up and down of course so you can pick it up put it against the wall whatever it is you want to do this could be on a piece of equipment you pop this off, boom, there you go. Now keep in mind, uh, <laughs> you don't want it to be like a 20 minute engraving and you're holding this thing steady, that, that won't work too well. But that's it, like two and a half kilograms. So lightweight, small, portable, uh, and pretty interesting stuff. Now, what's super interesting is this laser. This is very, very different than uh, what you've seen before here as a reference. Uh, you, that's the way I keep the bag so you can not zap your lasers. This is an X-Tool module off the D1 Pro. So this is a 20 watt diode laser. There's four diodes in here stacked up, bounced off mirrors, out comes uh, 20 watt, 455 nanometer wavelength. So this is a blue laser, very common. And what you do is you have your laser on and it just, you move the laser to do the engraving. Okay, straightforward stuff. This is, uh, <laughs> this is very different. This is a Galvo laser that has to do with how we're actually going to steer the beam around because nothing, there's nothing's moving here. There's some movement going on internally. And this is what's called a fiber laser. So this starts off, this is a one watt laser. So you might think, well, what one watt, 20 watt go for the 20 watt. Well, here's what happens. You start off with a diode. There are some optical fibers in here. They're doped with a very specific uh, rare earth element. Okay, <laughs> you dope your semiconductor to get this output wavelength. This is an infrared laser that's coming out of here, uh, 1064 nanometer. To get that, you dope it with a specific one. I think it's a terbium is the uh, rare earth metal that you dope your glass fiber with. It's what they call like an optical booster. Um, that 
what you can do now is you can pulse this laser and increase your op your uh, output power anywhere from starting off with one watt up to 10,000 watts. Now there's a bunch of other stuff going on. There's an optical oscillator going on. We're not going to get a full laser here course going on, but that's what's really interesting is you can have these tiny, super accurate controlled pulses of laser going out. They get boosted through here and they output into a finer point as well. Now the laser points, the laser dot that you see, the minimum dot that it projects when you're uh, ablating something or engraving, ballpark around uh, 100 micron. This here is 10 micron. So you can get a higher peak output into a smaller point. That means higher energy densities. And it is a different wavelength. So not everything engraves with an infrared laser. You might have to like organic stuff. Like if you want to say wood, you could shine this laser peak power on wood. It won't do anything. It's all about energy absorption. This is what you'd want that wavelength for. But there's a bunch of stuff this can't do that this can. So this laser pecker three, the way this laser is designed, is for plastics and metals, especially raw metals. So you can do like metals with coatings or other things in there. You can do pure metals in here. You can do like pure copper, aluminum, uncoated aluminum, gold, all that type of stuff. So this is a pretty slick machine. Gonna have a lot of fun with it. Now how it's happening here, we got a lens, okay? This goes up and down to focus. I'll show you that in a second. And you get a pair of mirrors inside of here and they're at right angles to each other. So the laser, comes along hits and this one's going to steer it this way so now the beam's going to go oh I'm trying to get perspective here but it's going to steer the beam this way it'll go to another mirror and then it can steer it this way potentially and they call it galvo so it's galvometer where that comes from originally is an old school again I'm going to super simplify this like an old school analog and meter right so we pass a current through you'd see that needle move up and down well if you specifically design the current you want. We've got electronics, now we're in the digital age here. You can send very precise pulse widths and move that along. So that's essentially the technology that's driving those mirrors. They're a low inertial mirror because you can't have them uh, have too much inertia as they're spinning. They have to build a stop start like these things move thousands of times a second. So super cool technology. You don't see anything going on. On the outside, it's like magic and out the beam comes and goes along here on your surface. So we're going to show you how all that works. If you, you know, there's a lot going on here. I simplified, glazed over a lot, but just thought I'd give you a basics of what makes this thing super cool. And this whole system here runs through an app on your phone, the little laser pecker app. You just crack that puppy open. Very straightforward interface here. You can take pictures of things. You can put text. There's included clip art that you can go through. So all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, there's lots of options that even comes equipped with different images on here too. What I'm gonna do is let me set this up. It comes with some material. These are some little black cards here, like aluminum cards with a nice glossy black coating. Let's engrave this real quick and I'll show you how the whole thing works. So there's a preview function here on the app. This puts the laser on and what we have, we have two lasers is up here. Yeah, so we got one that's here and another one coming through the lens. So what we do now, this is where we adjust the focus of the laser. So we're gonna drop the laser head down until these two beams here will get you in close. So until those two beams line up and become one, now we're in focus. That focus happens to be 130 uh, millimeters. They do include a cheesy wooden ruler, but this is gonna be your go-to way to focus it. Now what the laser is doing, it's giving me a preview of my image. There's two ways it can do it. This is in a, a different mode than I'm doing this image through what's called G-code. So it's actually giving me a preview of the commands it's going to send to the mirror and the, the method and way it's going to in, engrave this card. Another way you can do it, and you'll see another one, it'll just put a square. So the region that's going to take up, then you'll move your object and, uh, and align it like accordingly. So what we'll do now, we'll stop the preview. In the app, we're going to be engraving. Oh, here, let's do it. Here we go. Big fingers. Here we go. We're doing a metal oxide. So we're going to confirm that. And we're just going to hit the start button. Confirm. Yes. Away we go. So what I failed to recognize is I'm engraving on a black background. So I actually needed to invert the image. Screwed up a little bit on the cigarette here that Ricky's got going on. But this is, uh, this is from the Trailer Park Boys. But you can see 
just the level of clarity. You can do some kind of trick stuff. I'll see if I can pull something off and show you by the end of the video. Uh, I also did some stuff here in the back of the card as well. Like check out uh, the detail on this koi fish here. Just crazy. What I'm gonna do now is take this inside the house, do a bunch of engraving. We're gonna do something on the roller, show you how to work that and some other projects I got. Then we'll come back to here Give them some final thoughts, uh, things I like about it, maybe stuff I don't like so much about it. So let's get going. And what we're gonna do now is try to engrave the missing part on this pen. So I loaded up the same image. I measured it, 31 millimeters, as you can see there. With the rotary, you don't get the 4K. 2K is the max that you get. But what we'll do now is go start preview. We'll start that. And so what, uh, what it's going to show now is this line here. Let me get you in close. So there's the line of the full length that we're going to be engraving. I already adjusted the roller, uh, sorry, the, the laser pecker up and down here on the roller. There's a couple little O-rings on here so it doesn't slip. And I need to align it with the other pattern that's on here. Have the right gap. What I'm going to do now is you hit start. Uh, scroll preview and it's going to roll the pen through the range of motion uh, for the engraving so I want to see if it's centered if I have equal space on both sides uh, because there's a little space in the engraving and then up and down so give me a second so I can really focus to do this and then uh, we'll hit the button see how it goes Here we go, that was uh, about five minutes or so, something like that, and wow. <laughs> so you can see the difference in the quality of the engraving. What I'll do now, I'll get out the microscope just to show you. Okay, so let's take a look at the engraving here on the pen that I did. So this was from an XY style laser, 450 nanometer. Now lots of power, I think this was my 22 watt Creality. So you can see the minimum size, feature size. Let's go down here. Now look at this. Look how absolutely crisp those are. You can see the individual laser pulses that are on here. I think the beam has a minimum uh, dot size of about 20 micron versus the 100 micron or so with the other laser systems I have. You can see just how crisp it is. You can see the banding between each laser pass when it runs along. You know, higher power, so it does sort of melt. I probably went uh, too high on that version because all you want to do is just remove the layer. And that's exactly what this did. Like, that is just absolutely gorgeous. You, you can't really see that with the naked eye. You have to get 20 times magnification here to see it. Uh, so, yeah, had I known I would have had this laser in my hands at some point, I would have done it this way first. I've always wanted to put my logo onto a pen, especially the nib. I think having it this way, as you can see, uh, it's centered, it's symmetrical about the center, the line right through the middle. Hopefully I can line that up with the slit there on the nib. This is what's really handy with this, is you can just do that frame feature, feature I should say, so it shows you where it's gonna land, and you can just slide around with your uh, finger here on your phone, get it to where you think it's gonna be good, and uh, I think I think we should give that a try. So what I'm going to do this time, I'll do a depth of two, um, but I'm going to do multiple passes. I think maybe I will try doing, let's try four passes. And I'm just, I want to see how this goes. I don't have any spare ones to try on. So uh, this is going to be an all or nothing kind of gig. I just feel good about these settings. So let's see how it goes. In the software, when you do the preview, you can actually move your object around with your finger in the preview screen. That way it actually moves the Galvo mirrors to position your target. I think one pass would have been enough and also I'm off, damn it. Also, I really should have taken the uh, nib off because the ABS feed is underneath. You actually don't want to hit ABS with one of these laters. It's pretty terrible gas. Fortunately, there's not much in there, but I might have, I might have melted the feed a little bit. I don't know if this pen will write now. So I might have to swap that out, but, uh, you know, it engraved it, but yes, I was off just a little bit. One cool thing this system has is adjustability here. So what you can do is you can actually rotate the head. So if you put something on the roller, um, you have to have 130 millimeters from the end of the lens down to the object that you're going to engrave. Now, if you run out of room, the tumbler is quite high. What you do is you loosen this knob here, 
you can tilt the head back, you can push this out a little further, and now you can put the tumbler on here, or whatever it is you're going to, going to engrave, so that way you can get that distance you need, that 130 millimeters. I grabbed an old water bottle, thought I would give that a quick engraving, and then I had a spare wedding band up in the kitchen, one I didn't like so much, so I thought I'd engrave the inside. It's tough to see from here, and I don't want to move it if it's bad, but I think it's okay. Let's have a look here. I put a little pair of wings. There we go on the inside. Look how clean that is. Now, because you have this laser engraver, you will engrave everything and anything you can find. So this is just one of my X-Acto blades. And uh, you can see here, this has the black oxide coating. So depending on the number of passes and the depth of cut that you're doing, you can also change the color. So we got purple, we got gold, we got blue. Here we are on the other side. Hopefully I don't slice my fingers. I'm showing you this. We get some reds, we get like the silvery white color. So a slight little change in power and uh, you can make a huge difference in your final color that you do. So you can have some elaborate engravings and color coatings on uh, any type of materials, well not any materials, but compatible materials to really take your engraving to the next level. Just something as simple as a utility knife blade. Look how slick that looks. What's a water bottle engraving without the cap getting done? So I threw that on there as well. Another thing I've done is my phone chargers. They're a nice white background. I'll show you what it looks like here. You can get amazing detail on these. It's crazy. So obviously it's a ton of fun when you get something like this. You just start engraving stuff, whether it needs it or not. You know, whether you want to do something pretty like that. That still blew, blew me away. They could do that on plastic. There's more practical applications. Of course, uh, let's say your eyesight's going for grandma or grandpa or you yourself. You can put things like this, you know, that print is quite small. You can put the output of your power supply. Um, maybe you're a small little shop and you want to put serial numbers on your product, whatever it is. This is a great system to do something like that. Even the measuring cups of the kitchen, stainless steel, the stamping is, is not very deep, tough to read sometimes. I engrave those. They didn't need it, but uh, you can read the quarter, third, half cup and so on much, much better now. So let's talk about the things I like about it, the things I don't like. One, first and foremost, this isn't a commercial grade industrial application uh, fiber galvo laser setup. That's not what it is. This is uh, kind of entry level into that, that space. They make it quite easy by just operating it off your phone. So it does a lot of great functionality, all sorts of materials. This, like I said, this one's geared for metals and plastic. So it's meant for that. You put a piece of uh, of wood underneath it, like I've done all sorts of different things with my other lasers, whether it's making wood bend or cutting discs, whatever it is that you're doing, I could put this under here, high power, nothing will happen to it as well. So you gotta know the laser, know your application as well. I do believe actually they have one coming out soon, or maybe it's out now, the Laser Pecker 4 has dual laser. So it's got the infrared, plus uh, I think it's a standard 455 nanometer so you can do a uh, wood laser other stuff uh, sort of leather I should say other things where this laser won't do it so that's really really cool I like the portability it's so so simple to use as well uh, it's got all the features I bought a little case you know so I can carry this thing around which has been super handy and you can get fantastic detail so Yes, really good setup. A few things, I always find your strengths and weaknesses are real close to each other. So the fact that you can run this whole thing off your phone is really cool, but it's, it also makes it a little bit limited. Not being able to plug into, say, popular software like Lightburn, uh, where you can do more elaborate things. That's where it does uh, fall short. So like for color uh, engraving stainless steel, it would be nice if you could do a graphic and do different layers. So if you want to do one part, where's my uh, Ricky here or some koi fish, whatever. If you wanted to do different parts, different colors, if you wanted the main body uh, to be red, let's say this was stainless steel and we get a focus going on. Let's say this was a red body, you want a blue fins here, gold over there. You could break that into different layers uh, because we're doing it through the phone and it's a little more limited. You can't have that level accessibility. You can just say, you know, number of passes, output power, and the depth. I'm still not 100% sure what the depth means on there. Um, so it's a little bit more basic in that regard. But again, the fact that you could just uh, open up the camera, snap something that someone draws, or take a picture of someone, and then engrave their face on something, there's something to be said for simplicity as well. So again, that's where they, they know their product, they know their market, who this is going to attract. This isn't going after some large industrial company that needs a laser engraver, there's a different market for that. This is for you know, the retail sort of entry person that's doing these things, uh, maybe at a craft fair, 
bring your wares. They have some stuff for sale that's there. If you want to get your wedding bands engraved, uh, your business cards, a pen, whatever, all sorts of stuff, your laptop, your Tumblr, whatever it is you want going on, they can do it here and you can do it super quick and easy. It's pretty tough to mess it up, although pff, I'm a, <laughs> I will find the way if you can mess it up. Big thanks again to Laser Pecker for sending me their Laser Pecker 3 for review. I was finally able to get my logo onto a nib, although it's off center a little, that's going to keep me awake at night, but it's there nonetheless. I couldn't have done this without you guys, so thank you for that. Uh, in the description below, there is a coupon code, so folks who are in the market for something like this, uh, obviously, you know, I'll have a link to their website. Um, there's all sorts of sales going on all the time, but there's they gave me a, a little coupon code, good for a month from when this video airs. Uh, the, the code will be down there on the bottom. You save 50 bucks on top of whatever uh, sales that they have going on. So thank you uh, for offering that to the viewers as well. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, obviously. Comments, likes, all that thing. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more engraving with this, especially on pens. I'm thinking some of my ebonite pens, some of my plastic pens, obviously ones that are metal and anodized. Uh, if it can, like, just look at the difference there. We can do really cool stuff with this type of laser. I'm looking forward to this. Nothing's going to be safe from getting zapped. <laughs> we'll leave it there for now. We'll catch you next time.